Hello and welcome to another episode of Success Story Podcast. Today I have very special guests coming from Central America. Uh, I have uh, David Solano from uh, BNI Costa Rica and his translator Lorena Grados from uh, BNI Mexico. Thank you so much for accepting my invite. First, I guess I will ask uh, you, Lorena, since you are the translator, can you please uh, tell me a bit about yourself? Yes, of course, Thomas. Uh, hello, everybody. Good evening or good morning or good afternoon. I am Lorena Grados. I am a BNI networker in Mexico City at a Naucalpan Whiskey Lucan region. And uh, my company is a language uh, company and uh, we teach different languages such as uh, English, Spanish for foreigners, Italian, Portuguese, French, and German. And uh, I am here at BNI since two years and a half. And I'm very proud to be with, uh, to share this program with you and with David. Thank you so much. So that is fantastic. Uh that uh, we have another BNI member as part of this podcast. Uh, to my big surprise, I wasn't uh, sure who was coming to be uh, the translator. Um, can you please tell me how did you get this opportunity to be part of this podcast? Through Edgar Ramirez, who is the, uh, uh, the chief in my region. And Edgar Ramirez, uh, he knows David Solano from Costa Rica. And he introduced us, he uh, contacted us uh, to to work together and to be here with you uh, and be uh, together in this uh, podcast. But it's true, Edgar Ramirez, another BNI networker, uh, regional director at BNI. Yes, and uh, also another uh, guest in my Success Story podcast. We had a wonderful podcast with him. Uh, it was about two, three episodes back. So. Uh, Thank you. This way, I would like to thank Edgar for connecting us. Yes. So <laughs> now I would like to address the same question uh, to David. David, welcome. And please uh, tell me about yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, mi nombre es David. My name is David Solano in Costa Rica. I am a director and I am very pleased to be here with you, Thomas, in this podcast. The pleasure is on my side. So. David, I've never been to Costa Rica, so uh, tell me, how is life in Costa Rica? Costa Rica is pura vida. This is the slogan that we used to say people from Costa Rica, who is called Picos. So Costa Rica is all the life, it's completely life, it's pura vida. In Costa Rica, uh, we have so many beaches, so many mountains, so many nature, so many vegetation. So as we used to say, uh, Costa Rica, is your home. You are always welcome to be here. Costa Rica es tu casa. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, muchas gracias. I will love to uh, visit the paradise because your description sounds like it's, uh, it's a trip to paradise. Um, okay. So, David, uh, can you please uh, tell me, now we're getting to your success story. Uh, can you tell me about your early steps as an entrepreneur, please? Okay, since I was a child, I used to uh, start a new business. I was an entrepreneur since I was a child. For example, where I live, uh, I was the only one who had a video game, the Atari. So I invite to my uh, friends to, uh, to go to my house to play video games, but they have to pay a cover. So with this cover that they pay, they can play the video games. And meanwhile, they were playing. I sell to them some cookies, some co popcorn, and some sodas. So they have to pay for playing, and they can buy different uh, issues for it. And uh, in the other side, my neighbor, uh, she had a garden with a big tree of mangoes. So I collect the, uh, those mangoes and I sold to herself, to, the, to my neighbor. And that's why I started my bank accounts as an entrepreneur since I was a child. Wow, what an amazing story. I mean, you started early. Uh, there's no time to waste on your end. So from Atari to mangoes, where does the story continue?
Well, uh, I continued studying at school, and uh, then I started to be involved with the Red Cross. I was a volunteer at the Red Cross, and I like it so much. So I started uh, to, to study at college, uh, some specific courses, and uh, I started uh, uh, to, to, to keep training uh, as a volunteer, and then my career started to focus in, in that issue. So uh, then I started my company, training different companies in uh, that kind of courses for uh, to be to rescue and for safety. I studied for three years medicine, but then I realized that I really like to help people not in a hospital, but in a, uh, uh, giving uh, help before going to the hospital. So uh, I keep uh, training in, in this issue. And uh, I uh, realized that to be a, a volunteer in rescue, that was my passion. And I participated uh, as a volunteer in the 2010 earthquake in Haiti and in the two seven, uh, 2017 earthquake in Mexico City as an international volunteer uh, rescuing the people affected in these uh, earthquakes. And uh, my real uh, love, my real uh, profession is helping people before going to the hospital. So David, you must have been involved in many emergency situations. Can you, can you describe me the feeling when, when you come to the scene? Well, feelings are very difficult to explain because we are talking about uh, disasters where there is so many people who passed away. So uh, our, our main objective is to rescue the bodies of those persons because their families are very worried and they want to have their bodies to, um, to say goodbye to, to them. Uh, with so many respect and uh, according uh, to the ceremony that they want to to offer to those uh, uh, to those families to those relatives that passed away so it's very difficult uh, the feeling at the same time it's very it's a feeling of sadness but at the same time we are helping to those families to find the bodies of their relatives of their uh, families so this is what we are proud of helping uh, those people. And uh, we do that uh, job uh, with so many respect. And uh, it's the way that we, uh, uh, we, we offer our services to the people. David, it's, I, you have my, my utmost respect for doing what you're doing because it must be so difficult. I can't even imagine how difficult it must be to to go through this emotional stress and to be talking to the families and relatives and to share their sadness. So you are, you are an absolute hero. So respect for what you do. I really appreciate your words, Thomas. And uh, the truth is that I really love to help people since I was a child. And this is uh, the thing that I, I've been inspired. And at the end of this podcast, I will share with you some words that my mother used to say to me, but I will say it to you at the end of this program. Uh, and yes, I love to help. I love to support the people. And that is the reason that I am here at BNI, because BNI is helping, is supporting to the others. And I like to do it with so much love, with so much passion. And I am proud to be, to be here and to help people. Wonderful. And thank you for doing so. So uh, can we now speak about UNCA? What does that mean? And how did it start? As I mentioned before, I work as a volunteer at the Red Cross. So my objective is to be better every day. And with my entrepreneur mind, I learned how to 
teach uh, how uh, to learn all the processes for training people uh, in uh, for emergency situations. So uh, 15 years ago, with a Mexican, uh, he had his company in Mexico in this area. So I met this Mexican 15 years ago, and we decided to be partners and to extend the, uh, his company to Costa Rica. So since 15 years ago, Junca, uh, J-U-N-C-A, uh, is my company who, um, who train all the people to prevent emergencies. We used to work with the companies with emergency teams to training those emergency teams and uh, with the police, with the uh, firemen, and, uh, with the firemen, and we used to train all people, even, for example, mothers, teachers at the school, students, and uh, saving people is my, uh, my passion. Saving people and preventing uh, emergencies is my main objective. So can you tell me in depth about the training? Are there like different kinds of training for different situations? Yes, of course. There are different kinds of trainings according to the situation. For example, in the uh, first aid uh, training, there are different uh, situations that uh, could be uh, there in our day by day. For example, uh, CPR, uh, um, uh, the, to measure the, the pressure, a uh, vehicle rescue, uh, fires. And uh, if, for example, the company uh, used to work with dangerous uh, materials, we have to prevent all those accidents and we uh, train to the company in, in the manage of this uh, materials. Um, about uh, problems with breathing and in this uh, sit, uh, in this actual uh, situation with uh, COVID, it's very common to have a uh, breath uh, uh, problems. And uh, according to the, uh, uh, with the uh, um, hemoglobin, for example. So uh, according to the needs, the necessities of the company is that we used to train the company in these uh, first aids. Who are the people that you train? Is it organizations? Do you have individuals that are interested in the trainings as well? Correcto. Capacitamos a bomberos, paramédicos, eh, rescatistas, y principalmente a brigadistas, que son los que conforman el grupo de respuesta dentro de las empresas. Eh, las, eh, por ejemplo, en Costa Rica y en muchos países. Yes, uh, we can train uh, all people. For example, we can train uh, firemen, uh, paramedics, uh, rescue groups, uh, bikers. Uh, we can uh, uh, train specific groups, for example, out of the companies, such as uh, teachers in the school, students, families, uh, mothers, because maybe they can have a specific emergency situation at home. We can train uh, gym instructors. We can train uh, uh, bakers. So where there could be a risk, we have the, uh, the, 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 the task of training uh, people there. Now I would like to make a slight shift towards uh, your success because at the end of the day, this is the Success Story podcast. So can you please tell me what is your own recipe for success? What is your daily routine? What do you do differently? Eh, gracias, Thomas. Bueno, en realidad, la disciplina, eh, el compromiso, eh, el esfuerzo, el, el, la persistencia, y en realidad... Eh, thank you, Thomas. Well, my recipe is uh, discipline and commitment, uh, adding to so many efforts. And B and I helped me so much to start to be organized, uh, professional, 
and in my company. So the most important is that day by day, that uh, discipline and that effort be combined. For example, doing exercise, meditation, uh, to wake up early, to take a bath, all those processes that we used to do, to do day by day is an order, is discipline. So this is uh, as an entrepreneur and uh, as an owner of a company that discipline and compromise is the main precept of success. And uh, adding to my uh, comment before, is that uh, according to my profession, structure is very important. To follow the structure is very important because the life of, of the persons are in my hands. Uh, this is my responsibility. So we cannot uh, do any mistake. So we have to follow the structure. And uh, with BNI, if we follow the structure of BNI, we can reach the success. So part of my success is being a structure. I consider myself as a very structured person. And this is part of my success. I like how I asked you about your success story and you already started talking about BNI, but that's where I'm heading anyway. So please tell me about uh, BNI. When did you become a member and why? My story at BNI is that uh, the first time that I attend a BNI meeting, uh, I went as a substitute. Uh, so a person that was that was a BNI networker, he cannot attend the meeting and he asked to me to go. So I accept and uh, that person told me that I have to be very, very punctual and uh, well-dressed. So I, was ve I arrived very punctual to the meeting and uh, with a suit, very professional. And I visited the first and only chapter at Costa Rica. So there were only one chapter at Costa Rica in that moment. So when I arrived, because I am a very punctual person, uh, before me, there was the national BNI president. So I like it so much. And I realized that uh, punctual, uh, to be punctual at BNI was very important. And that impressed to me. So uh, when, I, uh, when the meeting started, I like it so much. And I think, wow, I have to be part of BNI. I have to be there. But uh, the speciality there was in the chapter. So, uh, I have to be part of a waiting list because probably we'll start a second chapter at Costa Rica. So I have to wait for that opportunity. And uh, well, uh, when I visited that chapter, it was located at the west side, at the east side of the country. And I lived in the west side of the country. So. Uh, I have to wait. I was in a waiting list. Well, so finally, uh, two chapters were uh, established at BNI. So I was part of the third chapter created in Costa Rica, and I was the third member uh, confirmed at BNI. Um, so uh, in 2014, we started the training uh, to create this, the, the chapter, and, and it was, and, and that was in uh, June 26, in uh, 2014, and uh, then Steven Carvajal, the national DNI president at Costa Rica, he offered me uh, to be the founder president of uh, my chapter. So uh, I accepted and during two years, I was working uh, or I was part of all the positions at BNI as a, um, the uh, membership committee, as the training uh, committee. So during all uh, the first two years, I was part of the different committees at BNI. And then uh, between 2015 and 2016, uh, Stephen offered me to be a consultant director at BNI. 
And so since that, I accepted. And since that, since that date, I am uh, supporting the national office at BNI Costa Rica. So, wow, David, I, I really like the, your progress climbing up the BNI ladder. Uh, but can we still go back to the beginning? And do you recall your very first business in BNI? I really don't remember exactly what my what was my first business at BNI, but I have clearly uh, I have a good memory in BNI in BNI about my first uh, success uh, client. I had a friend who worked in a company for 19 years. And I really wanted to train that company with my services. So I was looking to enter to that company. I talked to my friend and he helped me to give a training for free, just to have the opportunity to enter in the company. So I offered those, uh, that training for free, but the company never contracted me. We never signed any contract. So. Okay, but when I was at BNI, there was a networker named Carla. She is the owner of a gym. So uh, she asked me for a training for the staff of the gym, and she liked it so much. And her husband worked in the company that I wanted to enter since the beginning. So her husband liked the training at the gym and he asked for my contact. So Carla gave to him my contact and her husband asked me to uh, for a training for the company. I always wish it to be there. So uh, with uh, this, I confirm that uh, with BNI really opens, opens that door that you are not getting for so much time. So when you ask it for that referral in the good way, in a perfect way, uh, BNI really works. So uh, until now, up to today, I am, uh, I am giving those trainings to the company I always wish to be there. David, do you use BNI to connect internationally and do you have, did you gain strategic partners uh, on the international level through BNI? In realidad, tengo muchísimos, muchísimos amigos eh, a nivel internacional. He logrado hacer negocios con muchos, pero lo más importante aparte de los negocios son las relaciones. Obviously, I have so many, many, many uh, relationships uh, because of BNI. I have so many friends uh, at BNI. Yes, business, but the most important are the relationships. As you, Thomas, I have a program where I have met with BNI people from Spain, Italy, Portugal, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, Argentina, and other countries. So uh, thanks to BNI, I have been meeting persons from so many different countries. For example, I have a closer uh, relationship with Enrique Fontanelle from Colombia, Edgar Ramirez from Mexico, and for example, even with Ivan Meissner. I met with him uh, face to face, and I have the opportunity to interview Ivan Meisner in my uh, program. So I guess that the main, uh, the, the, the main important uh, thing at BNI, at BNI, yes, are the business, but the relationship that you create in so many countries. So there are no frontiers at BNI. I had friends in, as you in Bratislava, I can imagine that, and uh, in Dubai, in Qatar, in India. So uh, uh, for me, the most important is friendship and then the business, because with friendship, we could have a good business. And I have strategic uh, partners uh, in Costa Rica 
from uh, other different countries. And that's exactly what uh, being a member of BNI is all about, that you are building these relationships and not just BNI in Costa Rica or Slovakia, but you discover, go and explore all BNI countries. And you've done it very well. Uh, so please tell me about your, your, you said you have a similar, um, like a video model. Can you please tell me more about it? The, there is a person uh, who is a big influence to create my program. And that person is Edgar Ramirez. When I started my training as a, uh, as a director at BNI, uh, I met, for example, uh, Mark Gibson in Spain. And then in Mexico, I met with Edgar Ramirez. And uh, during my training with him, uh, I visited his program because he had a program called a Networker Lunch, a weekly program. And I really like it so much. And I think, wow, I want to have a program too uh, as networking lunch. So in March 3rd of the uh, last year, I start working on my first program with another two BNI networkers. But there was the first program and immediately the, uh, the world stopped because of the pandemic in March. So my program was alive. And I was thinking in inviting different directors from different countries to my program. But with the pandemic, everything stopped. So uh, I started uh, to, to change all the dynamic of the program. Internet gave me so much opportunities to interview uh, directors from uh, parts of the world. So I guess that actually uh, in, in this moment, my program is a window to the other side of the world from the uh, companies and from the BNI uh, networkers in Costa Rica. And I have interviewed uh, people, for example, from Mexico, Peru, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and as I mentioned before, uh, Ivan Meissner. Ivan Meissner was my guest in my program. So I was uh, very happy and very proud. And uh, it, it, uh, it is uh, the result of the uh, friends that I have in different countries through BNI. And I really went with my program to offer uh, education and uh, to, to, to reach for the entrepreneurs in Costa Rica and the BNI networkers in my country too. Wow, fabulous, fabulous idea. And I'm glad I'm following in your footsteps. Can you, can you briefly tell me about your interview with Ivan Meissner? How was it uh, talking to him? Sí, bueno, fue muy interesante. Eh, en realidad, vamos a ver, es, es una persona tan humilde. Eh, la contacté yo. Eh, yo creo que los sueños eh, este, se hacen realidad cuando uno realmente quiere. Eh, lo contacté a su, a su eh, perfil en Facebook. Me ponte de acuerdo con mi asistente, me dio el correo del asistente y empezamos a programar la, la, la entrevista. Eh, tan, tan fácil fue, eh, muy organizado me pidieron. It was very interesting. And uh, when you have a dream, they can, come, they can come true if you really, if you really wish it. So one of my dreams once was uh, to interview Ivan Meissner. And I remember that I contacted him through Facebook. So uh, he answered me uh, that I have to contact with his assistant. And he's a very kindly person. Uh, we start to um, organize all the interview. And uh, they asked me for information about the program as you, Thomas. So uh, I remember that even Ivan Meissner, uh, he recorded a video to, uh, to be part of this interview and uh, for the, uh, to spread the, the interview for, uh, in, in BNI. 
So uh, the interview was through Facebook Live, uh, through internet, but uh, Live. So it was very interesting because many people asked uh, to Ivan Meissner so many questions, received so many comments, and uh, it was a very, very great experience. And uh, well, uh, the main topic uh, that we talk during the interview was uh, that uh, process of changing BNI from uh, the, the, the meetings face to face through the virtual meetings. So in, in that moment, uh, we, we was uh, with the pandemic, we were with the pandemic, but it was uh, a very uh, good experience. Uh, Ivan Meissner is a very uh, kind person. Uh, he knows so much and it was, and, and he shared with us as his knowledge and it was one of my best experience at BNI. And I know that I will keep on my uh, for many times. David, can you please tell me uh, what is in the future for you and what what are your ambitions? Sí, realmente fue una gran experiencia, no solo Ivan Meissner, sino grandes personas que he entrevistado que tienen muchos años, por ejemplo, Tiago Enrique da Cuña de España y otros. Pues sí, una experiencia muy linda que realmente me permite BNI. El futuro, Talking el about the, the, the interview, it was a great experience, not only with Ivan Meissner, but with other persons at BNI, such as uh, Tiago Enriquez in Spain. But well, about my future at BNI, uh, Costa Rica is a very small country and BNI is growing. So my aspirations are growing as BNI is doing. So uh, I really would like to be, for example, an executive director or a regional director, or why not a national director, but in another country. And I am working on it. So I am working with so many efforts to reach those dreams that I have with BNI. And uh, because of the pandemic, for example, eight of my business, different uh, business, uh, seven of them uh, were stopped because of the pandemic. And I was uh, uh, working on with only one, which is the Mexican food uh, with uh, delivering. So this is the only business that I uh, continue working on uh, with the pandemic. But uh, well, BNI is growing and I really want to go uh, for more. And I really want to reach more uh, as I could reach. And I am working on that. And I'm sure that uh, with um, discipline and effort, I could reach those dreams with BNI. And I am 100% sure that you will. Uh, so we're pretty much at the end of the podcast. So uh, David, I would love to ask you to finally unveil what were your mother's words that inspired you? I want to thank you for this invitation. I'm really very happy. I'm very proud to be with your program and I wish so many success for you and congratulations. Well, the words that my mother said to me are uh, the person who lives and do not serve to others do not serve to live. And I guess, and I think that this is a very important uh, phrase because it is according with BNI uh, principles. And uh, if you are here in life and you do not serve and you do not help to the others, your life is nothing. Your life means nothing. So helping and serving to other persons is the most important. And I learned it uh, with Ivan Meissner too, because his uh, humility, because he's a, a very kindly person, a very kind person. And uh, I learned with him that we have to, uh, to, to, to help the other persons. And BNI is what is doing uh, with all the networkers. So uh, the most important too is to treat the persons as 
you want to be treated. So equality is very important too. And uh, to, uh, to serve to the others and to help to the others. And this is uh, the most important for me too. Well, it was absolute honor to have you both here in this podcast. Muchas gracias, uh, Senora Lorena, Senor David. Uh, it was <laughs> very, very inspiring. I really enjoyed hearing your childhood story and also uh, how you started in business. And uh, I think it's very inspirational and uh, um, we can learn so much from uh, your story. So thank you again, uh, Lorena. Your translation was right on spot, perfect. Uh, you have a huge admiration from me and uh, I'll be happy to work with you again when I uh, interview somebody from either Central or Latin America. So this way I would like to thank you. And if there's anything you would like to add. Thank you so much, Thomas, so much. Uh, for Thomas, being part of this uh, great project. I'm really very a pleasure to be with you. And uh, remember that if you need support, if you need help, whatever you may need, you have a new friend in Costa Rica and you are welcome to visit us. Remember that we have so many beaches, so many mountains, so many nature. And uh, my house is your house. This is a very Latin common phrase that we used to say that my house, my home is your home. So, if you may need something, please uh, contact me and you have a friend in Costa Rica. So thank you so much. And from my side, Thomas, I really want to thank you too. Uh, I'm really very happy to be part uh, of this uh, podcast and to help you. And I learned about you and I learned about David. And now I know that I have two friends in Slovakia, in Costa Rica, and you have a friend in Mexico. So. Uh, please feel free to contact me if I can help you. Thank you so much. Saludos a, saludos a toda and regards to your audience that uh, is listening to your podcast. And everybody is welcome to Costa Rica. Everybody and regards. Very well said. On this note, our podcast is at the end. Thank you so much and goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Um,